The St. Louis Cardinals make a surprising signing by inking Lance Lynn. Plus, the first big-name pitcher is off the board. What exactly can we learn from Aaron Nola re-signing with the Phillies and how it affects the free agent market? This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou with a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter, X at J.D. Sports Radio. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. Want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. You can also find us on YouTube. If you're coming over to YouTube, you want to see the visuals, fantastic. Like, subscribe, comment, interact with us. Hit the notification button so you know when new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So a lot of things have gone down since we last spoke. We had the uh, Cardinals non-tendering a group of players, making them free agents. Andrew Kisner, Dakota Hudson, Jake Woodford, Juan Yepes. Uh, we're going to delve into that a little bit later on in today's episode. Uh, today, the Cardinals dropped a bomb on us and uh, have signed Lance Lynn to a deal. That's right. Lance Lynn, the same guy that they had way back when. He's back. Uh, I'm a little bit in shock about the signing. Um, one year plus an option guarantees $10 million in 2024, plus a $1 million buyout on the option. This is according to John Heyman's tweet, by the way, could be worth about 26 million over two years with escalators. Uh, he points out the pluses for Lynn coming back to St. Louis started with the Cardinals, obviously lives nearby in Southern Illinois. He's pending a physical on this deal, which is supposed to take place tomorrow. And I know that people like Lance Lynn. The, the personality of Lance Lynn is great. He's always been an entertaining guy. We enjoyed him when he was with the Cardinals. Uh, bring some fire, which is great. I'm, I'm all for that. I think he's going to be an awesome personality in the clubhouse. My question about this is, what was the rush in signing him now? The whole market is still available. Like, why did you need to move in on Lance Lynn right away? As if there's nobody else out there who can give you the same production. And that's what I'm thinking about here. I'm not thinking about just personality stuff. I'm thinking about the production on the field and what Lance Lynn was last year when he pitched for the White Sox and he pitched for the Dodgers. Uh, Kevin Wheeler from over at KMOX put it nicely in a tweet. Listed the positives for Lynn, which I'm getting a barrage of people who are hitting me up on Twitter X about, yeah, but he's an innings eater and he's got strikeout stuff. And that he did last year. He threw over 180 innings. I think it was 183 at a 9.3 Ks per nine, which is great stuff. Sure. But Wheeler points out in his tweet, like everything else. And he used a great word. Alarming. Alarming. A 5.73 ERA, 5.53 FIP, a 4.86 expected ERA. He allowed 44 home runs last year, which led the league. He had his highest walk percentage since 2018. His average fastball velocity has been dropping steadily since 2019. Lance Lynn is not a reclamation project. Lance Lynn is on the decline. Now, you have this signing, and we have to wait and see what else the Cardinals do this offseason because, as many people have also pointed out, if he's just your fifth spot, the rotation guy, and you end up hitting a home run to fill the other two spots, cool. 
I'm more shocked about the timing of this type of signing. That That's really my biggest thing. We always knew that whoever they put in the back end of this rotation, whoever was going to be that fifth guy, wasn't going to be a, some superstar. But at the same time, I thought he would be better than what Lance Lynn is right now. Now, if you're holding out hope that Lance Lynn is going to magically turn things around and be who the guy he was in 2021, okay. But if he's not, in the last two years, he has not been that guy. He's been getting worse. And yeah, he had a couple of good starts with the Dodgers down the stretch. I mean, I'm sure he was rejuvenated a little bit after getting moved from the White Sox. Goes and joins a contender like the Dodgers. But did you see what the Diamondbacks did to him in the playoffs? Not great. <laughs> um, I'm just not high on Lance Lynn. I, I just, I, there's, everybody else is out there still. I just, I thought they should have aimed higher for that fifth spot. You can still find innings eaters that are better pitchers than Lance Lynn. So I didn't know what the rush was to grab Lance Lynn like he was a hot commodity. I just didn't understand it. I still don't. Uh, other news, Daniel Descalso is coming back to the team to be a member of the coaching staff in 2024, which is cool. We liked Daniel Descalso when he was here. Uh, we don't know his title yet. Apparently, this does not affect anything with Yadier Molina. Katie Wu from The Athletic says that the you know front office is still working on things with Yadi, trying to figure out the best role for him. So that's cool. Um, he's going to be a bench coach. All right, so this just popped off. So he's going to be a bench coach in 2024. Joe McEwing, who was the team's bench coach, has been named a special assistant to president of baseball operations, John Mozeliak. So there you go. So he's in. Um, okay. Well, leave me your comments down below about the, the Lance Lynn signing. I know people are trying to find the positives in it, and that's great. I mean, I'm usually a pretty positive guy. I just... I, I could spend $10 million on somebody else who I think is better than Lance Lynn. That's all. I'm not saying he's going to be their, their ace and he's one of their top signings. I just didn't understand what was the rush to get your hands on Lance Lynn. I, that's really my, my issue here. Uh, now, on Sunday, we had our big, our first big free agent news of this offseason when Aaron Nola re-signed with the Phillies. Seven years, $172 million is the reported contract. At first glance, the... Uh, the area that stands out there is the seven years on the deal. If you remember coming into the offseason, we were seeing people, people predicting a five-year deal for the 30-year-old right-hander. And I've repeatedly said how shocked I was that five years was going to be that prediction, considering that, you know, last year, Carlos Rodon got six years and $162 million with the Yankees. I don't understand why Nola or any of these guys would take anything less than that. Um you know, especially the top tier guys, obviously. Talking about Nola, uh, Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery, Yamamoto, Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray is a little bit different. You know, Sonny Gray is 34. So three to four years seems it makes a little more sense than these guys who are all 30 and 31 years old. So, uh, but my first thought when I heard about this signing was I'm not surprised. Uh, I've said since day one that I didn't think Nola was going to leave. There was a chance, obviously because nothing is 100% in this world. But but during the uh, Phillies playoff run and how well he pitched there during the postseason, why on earth would he want to leave Philadelphia? You know, he had a lot of reasons to stick around. He's never pitched for anybody else, comfortable with their organization. Uh, his intentions, he even said at the press conference, was to stay there. Um, they have a really good team. Bryce Harper, Trey Turner, JT Romuto, Zach Will I mean, they're all still there. They're not going anywhere. So they're not going to fall off anytime soon, at least you don't think. And as long as the money and the years were decent enough, why would he jump ship? Why would he go anywhere else? Unless the team was going to come in and just, you know, blow the Phillies off or out of the water. It just didn't make a lot of sense in my eyes for Nola to go anywhere else. He's got a great thing going in Philly. And now he's got his future secured there. Um, the Cardinals were never going to be that team to come in and just throw like outlandish years of money at them, no matter how much people wish they would be. Uh, John Heyman reported that Nola met with other teams and turned down more money to stay in Philly. The Cardinals apparently not one of those teams. Derek Gould at the uh, Post-Dispatch, stltoday.com, said the Cardinals 
never got to the point of making an offer to Nola or meeting with the pitcher. They were not a team that were actively engaged in trying to lure him away from returning to the Phillies like other NL clubs, according to sources. Uh, Mo even told Tom Ackerman on KMOX that Nola's agents called him on Sunday, said, hey, heads up, Nola's going to stay in Philly. That's where he wants to be. Um, sure, Nola would have been a good fit at the top of the Cardinals rotation, no doubt about that. But again, I bring up the factors of why the Cardinals are going to have a tough time this year. Players usually want to play for a winner. The Cardinals at this moment are a last place team. The players usually want to get the most money they can. The Cardinals have rarely won any betting wars for big time free agents. They got Contreras last year, but I don't know how competitive the market was for Contreras' services. Definitely not at the level of what it's going to be to grab pitching this offseason. Um, do players want to live in St. Louis? I mean, that's a thing. You know, they like to go to the coast. They like the bigger markets. Uh, if you're going to live in the Midwest, Chicago's like the big city you go to, right? So um, when the team isn't winning and they're not offering the most money and you have to move to St. Louis, I mean, those are a lot of things that free agents are going to be talking about and why it's going to be hard for Mosellock to bring – any of these top tier guys in um, all of it's playing against John Mosellock right now. Um, it's why I continue to believe if uh, the Cardinals are going to get an upper tier guy to get an ace for this team, they're going to go through the trade route to do it. You know, you've got too many holes to fill in the rotation and the bullpen. And if you're only stretching your resources to $200 million, which is fine. But when everybody else who's in the market to go get the same stuff you are is willing to go 250, 300, put you in a bind. So we're going to have more on the Aaron Nola signing and how it affects the market moving forward. Uh, we'll talk about that next on Locked on Cardinals. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. Bucks. If your team wins, if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is very easy to use. It's got a wide range of uh, betting options, which include the spreads, the player props, the over-unders, a whole lot more there. Uh, this week, I did okay. I went 50-50, pick of the Ravens over the Bengals. That worked out. Rest in peace, Joe Burrow, and likely the Bengals season. Lions didn't cover against the Bears. We got close, though. At the end of the game, they got a sack. Ball came loose, and the offensive lineman for the Bears kicks it out of the back of the end zone, and that doesn't allow one of the Lions players to fall on it in the end zone. Instead, if it had scored a touchdown there, that covers. Instead, you get a goofy kick out of the end zone. They fall two and a half points short of covering. So that was some pain. Tonight, Eagles at the Chiefs, Super Bowl rematch with the Chiefs coming off a of bye week. Andy Reid with an entire bye week and the other week to – Plan for the Eagles? Give me the Chiefs. Favored by two and a half at home. I'll take that. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24 7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. So go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. So now that NOLA seemingly took a hometown discount at seven years, 172 to stay in Philly, how is that going to affect how the rest of the market shakes out now? Uh, John Heyman predicted six years, 168 for NOLA from the get-go. So... And, you know, other people were saying, and we talked about this uh, last week with Brooke Grimsley from um, 101 ESPN, that, you know, a lot of people were predicting some lower numbers, like five years, 150, and how surprised we were at the fact that that's what people were saying. 6168 is what Heyman said. So he was the closest. So let's go and look at some of his predictions uh, of what he thinks is going to happen moving forward. Uh, Shohei Otani obviously is not a realistic option for the Cardinals, but Heyman, I just, the numbers are crazy. 10 years, 600 million is what he's predicting now. And he's got all the big guys in this one. The Dodgers, Giants, Rangers, Mets, Yankees, Red Sox, Cubs, Padres. He's got the Mariners in there as well. I still think Dodgers is where he lands. That's my bet. 
Uh, Blake Snell, a guy that a lot of Cardinal fans would love to have under contract. Just won a second Cy Young Award. Heyman saying six years, $200 million. Ooh. Yoshinobu Yamamoto, who uh, will be posted, I believe, on Tuesday now, like in the morning, which will open up that 45-day negotiating window. He thinks eight years, $200 million for Yoshinobu. Again, he's 25, so uh, whoever locks him up probably want to keep him for the majority of his prime. Uh, former Cardinal Jordan Montgomery, six years, 120. Now you see those contract lengths. You see the amount of money. Do you really see the Cardinals giving the length of those deals and money involved to any of these guys? I do not. I don't think so. It's very out of character for them. Remember we heard the uh, quote was they're going to have to make some uncomfortable decisions. Uh, six years, $200 million for uh, Snell. Pretty uncomfortable area <laughs> for what the Cardinals are used to. Um, so again, if they didn't have so many areas to fix, sure, you could throw a lot at one guy, but um, I just don't think it's going to happen. I really don't. Now, the next tier of pitchers seems more like the Cardinals' wheelhouse to me. Katie Wu from The Athletic, again, says the Cardinals will be one of the teams in on Yamamoto, though it is unclear how heavily they will pursue him. To me, that sounds like another situation where, sure, they'll talk to his agent, say they want him, but... When the money starts pouring out of these big markets, specifically New York, which is where I think he probably goes, um, the Cardinals will then respectfully decline to go to those lengths that these other teams are willing to go. They'll bow out rather quickly. I'd love to be wrong here because it'd be great to sign somebody of the caliber of Yamamoto at age 25. Like if you're going to give a six, seven year deal to somebody, age 25 is the, is the right age to do that. Doing it at age 30 is not the right time, but unfortunately that's where you are after seeing what Nola just got. Um, I just don't see the Mets or the Yankees letting the Cardinals outbid them. Do you? Uh, Sonny Gray, again, older, which is why the deal is expected to be shorter, but Heyman says three years, $72 million. Uh, Bob Nightingale released a story on Sunday over at usatoday.com calling the Cardinals the favorites to sign free agent pitcher Sonny Gray, pointing out that they badly need experienced starters to fill innings. They are without five pitchers who made 82 of their 162 starts this past season. The signing of Lance Lynn, you know, brings that down a little bit. So maybe that's the move, and now they push in with a bigger deal for Sonny Gray. But that's encouraging to hear, but you've also got – you know, the Braves looking to add another arm. And let's be honest, uh, Sonny Gray would be an incredible fit in Atlanta, wouldn't he? I mean, it makes a lot of sense. The fact that their farm system isn't rated all that high. They're like one of the bottom ones right now. Uh, so making a trade for a top arm seems like it would be tougher because they don't have the, the the level of prospects needed for that. So the Braves have me worried for sure when it comes to, to being interested in Sonny Gray. They did sign reliever Reynaldo Lopez today for three years, 30 million. So going to three years, 75 to get gray doesn't seem like it would bother them all that much if that's the guy they want. Uh, a couple of other names here who I think are in the Cardinals budget. Eduardo Rodriguez, five years, 90 million, according to Heyman. Lucas Giolito, three years, 45. It's a name that continues to uh, really swirl around the St. Louis Cardinals name. <laughs> I guess. I, I don't know. Because then you get down. If you go, if you don't get them, then you're falling down into the Michael Wakas and the Nick Martinez's of the world, Seth Lugo, um, which are fine pieces. But those were the guys I wanted to be the fifth guy. I had higher aspirations than Lance Len. But now he's the fifth guy. So that's why, again, I'm leaning towards a trade as the way the Cardinals go to to land a legit number one arm this offseason. Uh, in the same write-up by Nightingale, he mentioned that the Dodgers are working on a deal with the White Sox for Dylan Cease, which isn't great for the Cardinals because the Dodgers have better prospects than the Cardinals have. So they're at least the ones that are available to give up. Um, so that could net, you know, they've got a lot of good pitching prospects. We know that because the Cardinals have been interested in like, hey, we'll take some of that. Um, but the Cardinals don't have top pitching prospects to, to offer outside of Tink Hintz, really. So 
like Chicago, if you're going to choose a team to trade with, Dodgers seem to make more sense. That leaves you with, you know, guys like Shane Bieber and Tyler Glasnow's possibilities. And I think the Cardinals certainly have the ammunition to get either of them if they want to. But when we talk about the, the trickle-down effect, of guys getting signed, if some of these larger market teams don't get the guys they want through free agency, where do you think they're going to go next? Same place the Cardinals are, already currently shopping. So if the Cardinals want one of these guys getting a deal done as far as trading guys, getting a deal like that done sooner rather than later might be in their best interest. Now, because I picture my head when I think about everybody trying to get the starting pitching, I, I have this Black Friday shopping bonanza in my head where everyone is racing doors open. Everyone's racing to get to the same shelf to get the top item. And the larger markets are just larger shoppers. You know, they're the ones who are six, five two fifty, using their girth and their hips to block the rest of the teams out who are trying to get in there to get something. And if you don't get creative and you don't sneak in somehow past them, you just have to end up shopping at a different shelf altogether. And that might be what ends up happening with the Cardinals here. Uh, I want to talk about the non-tenders next, where one of the top arms in the league surprisingly made available. Problem is, he may not pitch next year. So we'll do that next year on Locked on Cardinals. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on sports today is here for you 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league. So go to locked on sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. The Milwaukee Brewers, the demise of the Milwaukee Brewers. It's happening. Like Council gone to the Cubs. And now they have non-tendered right-hander Brandon Woodruff, making him a free agent, which sent shockwaves throughout the league because Woodruff has been one of the top pitchers in the league since uh, 2018. Uh, in his career, 46 and 26, 3.10 ERA, an ERA plus of 137. Yeah, I'll take all of that. Two-time All-Star, top five in the Cy Young voting in 2021. but. Here's the issue. Here's the rub, as they say. He suffered a shoulder injury this year, a pretty severe one that cut a season to just uh, 11 starts. And it's an injury that is going to keep him out most of next season, we think. And there's a possibility he does not pitch in 2024. It could happen. Uh, John Morosi reports that a majority of the league contacted his representatives when the news dropped on Friday that he was being non-tendered by Milwaukee and that he is expected to sign a multi-year contract with whichever team he goes to. At a minimum, you want to get him on two years in case he doesn't pitch for you following surgery and is gone the entire 2024 season. Uh, should the Cardinals look into this? Yes. Yes, they should. Duh. You know, he's been fantastic. Uh, made $10.8 million last year. So two years, 30, 35 million, somewhere in there. Would that get it done? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the market is for a guy who's coming off severe shoulder surgery and may not pitch next year. I don't know what that is. The only guy that I can compare that to is uh, Shohei Otani, which is not a comparison at all because he'll be back and at least be able to hit next year. Um, it's it's another injury risk gamble that you would take. Upside is huge though if it works out, right? The floor is he never pitches again and you just waste your money. Um, the Cardinals have done something similar to this situation before with Chris Carpenter. That worked out pretty nice. We like that. Want to side young. That was fun. Again, the problem for the Cardinals here is that they need someone now. Like now. The Lynn signing has filled one hole. You've still got Michaelis. You've got whatever you get out of Matt's, who's always hurt anyway. So you still got two big holes in the rotation to fill. You still got some bullpen stuff you got to fill. And Woodruff won't be ready next year. Not at the start. Possibility that he comes back later on. And if you do well and you get him back for the end of the upcoming season and he helps you in the playoffs and move forward, fantastic. And then you have him for another year. 
And if he's anything like he's been while he was in Milwaukee, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. The reward is pretty high on a Brandon Woodruff. Again, competition for him is going to be big. Everybody's going to be in on him. You heard the quote of Morosi where pretty much, what do you say? A majority of the league contacted his reps. So a lot of people would love to have Brandon Woodruff and are willing to sit him for a year and let him get back to full health to get him back for the, the other year if he becomes the Brandon Woodruff we're all used to. So I think it's worth looking at, but I don't know if it's something the Cardinals can do considering they need the help now. Unless you're deciding that next year you're really not competing for a playoff spot. Would Mo and company ever admit that? I doubt it, but... I mean, the Lance Lynn thing is like a one-year deal, maybe two years, so probably a one-year. And maybe they're thinking about 2025 more than they are about 2024. I don't know. We haven't heard that. Um, let's get to the tender guys, or I, the non-tender guys, I should say. Um, Andrew Kisner, Dakota Hudson, um, Jake Woodford, Juan Yepes. They're all gone. They're out. Um, I think we could all agree that Kisner was probably the name that surprised most fans. It was not to me. I wasn't one of them because we had a great discussion with Josh Jacobs at RedbirdRants.com about this very scenario and that it was likely to happen and why it could happen. Um, you had, what, Herrera put on the 40-man, Pedro Pajes. Isn't that how he says his last name? He um he got put on the 40 man. He's the other catcher. So we're like, all right, you got Contreras. That's four catchers on the 40 man rotation. That that does that the 40 man roster, that doesn't sound normal. What something must be up, something's gonna happen. And it did. Andrew Kisner was the odd man out. Uh, despite having his best offensive season at the major league level. Um, Yvonne Herrera is ready, and the Cardinals are ready to let him take the reins. He was the Cardinals minor league player of the year. Just announced that recently, 23 years old, is making peanuts, doesn't cost you anything. Produced career highs in doubles with 27, batting average in the minors this year and at the major league level in his uh, brief stint on the Cardinals this year, uh, 297. On-base percentage at 451, his slugging percentage was 500, OPS 951. Lots of hard contact, apparently showed a ton of improvement from behind the plate. Not that he was really bad before, but he's just getting better. Our guy Daniel Guerrero from stltoday.com said this about Herrera. For Cardinals minor leaguers with a minimum of 350 plate appearances, Herrera led in on-base percentage and walk rate, 20%, per fan graphs. He finished second in OPS compared to other catchers around minor league baseball. The 23-year-old had the fifth most walks, the fourth highest OPS, and a 147 weighted runs created. Plus, that was the fourth best. Herrera finished the minor league season with a 991 fielding percentage in 64 games from behind the plate and thwarted 12 of the 59 base stealing attempts against him. I'm excited for Herrera. I liked what we saw from him after he got called up and was on the Cardinals. I like his aggressive swings at the plate. Like he looks like a guy who can do damage at the plate. And he seems to be well-rounded behind the plate as well. 23 years old. I like it. I wish the best of luck to Andrew Kisner. Everybody loves Kisner. He's a great guy. But the upside of Yvonne Herrera is, is too great. Like, you can't just keep him down there still. So um, the move had to be made. And I'm sure Kisner will land on a roster somewhere as a backup in the league. Um, Jake Woodford and Dakota Hudson, let's face it, they, they've had their opportunities at the major league level, they never took full advantage of them. Um, pretty disappointing years this year for both of them. Uh, I know Dakota had, at the end of the year, showed some some upside. And he was a guy I thought they might keep around and keep him as like kind of that swingman guy, the fifth and sixth rotation guy. But uh, they decided to move on, and Lance Lynn's going to be that guy instead. Um, so... I'm sure they'll land on some rosters. Dakota Hudson, I'm sure, will get some interest more than Woodford. And then Yepes, I think he's going to be an excellent DH somewhere. I thought he was going to be the guy for the Cardinals this year, but Jordan Walker got fast-forwarded, and his arrival to St. Louis, and they're just he just got squeezed. There was nowhere to put him. 
um, never really got a chance to prove himself in St. Louis. And from what I've, I've heard, kind of wanted out. He didn't really want to be around anymore after getting stuck at AAA for most of this season. And, you know, you can blame him. Uh, I'm sure he'll catch on somewhere, and it wouldn't shock me to see him hitting 240 with 20 home runs somewhere else. Like, I think he's got that kind of potential. The Cardinals just, they value the ability to do something other than just swing the bat. And not a great outfielder. I guess he dabbled in first base. It's just, they've got guys like that. They don't need more. So, unfortunately, they couldn't get anything in return, like trading them or anything before the non-tender deadline. So, that, that kind of shows you what the league thinks of them. Anyway. We got to wrap things up. Uh, thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Like, subscribe on YouTube. Help our channel grow. Love you guys. Lance Lynn, now a Cardinal. Leave the comments down below. I'm probably going to rip an entire new episode all about Lance Lynn because <laughs> that's how big this is. Because people are either scratching their heads going, what in the what are we doing? Or there's other sides who are like, I think it's a good move. There's both sides of the fence. I lean towards the side that's kind of disappointed. I don't mean to think that Lance Lynn doesn't have some sort of upside, but I want to hear from you and we can, we can discuss it all. You're the best fans of baseball for a reason. I will see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.